everybody, this is Brian Mulligan, and welcome to my first official video blog for Autodesk Smoke. Now, recently I started a blog site highlighting some of the features of Smoke because, you know, everyone had been talking about Final Cut Pro 10 and uh, Adobe uh, Premiere Pro and maybe switching to Avid Media Composer 6, and I thought, you know what, no one's really talking about Autodesk Smoke. So I thought, since I use Smoke every day, I'm a, a, a promo and commercial editor at WTHR Television in Indianapolis, a local broadcast affiliate for NBC. And I kind of figured, I use Smoke, so why don't I get out there and share some of the things that, that I know. Recently I did a blog post about the history feature for Smoke. And history is a way for Smoke to keep track of these setups and effects uh, on a clip as you work on them and process them through different modules. Uh, it allows you to kind of go and step into any, se any setup of that and change it at any point. Uh, I also got a recent uh, message from an Avid DS editor who was thinking about switching to Smoke, and he was asking me about transitions on the timeline, and I thought, you know what, these two things work really well together. So he showed me this picture of the effects tree inside of Avid DS that he would use to create, you know, a sort of a custom transition on the timeline, and was asking me if I could do something similar inside Smoke on Mac. Uh, Smoke on Mac doesn't have a batch, but you can sort of use uh, something like this with history and uh, do a custom transitions on the timeline that pretty much allow you to do anything you'd like. All right, so here's our timeline. Our anchor's on set and it cuts to the wide shot. All right, so let's throw in a custom transition. If I click over to the edit point, I've got a couple of transitions, dissolves, wipe, customs, and axis. So let's just choose custom, and there's our custom transition, and what we'll do is we'll just set the length of it here to be one full second. And then with the transition, uh, custom transition selected, um, what you're seeing here is it's just doing this 50% uh, blend because it, it's, it's waiting for you to actually assign what this custom transition is. And the way to do that is to basically match this clip out. So if I hit control and the match key, which is control and question mark, it will pop out the to and from sources of my edit underneath this transition. So my first source is the uh, three shot of the anchors, and my second source is the wide shot of the studio. All right, so this is my tight shot of the anchors and my wide shot of the studio, and you can see that both of these clips are just one second long, which is the exact length of our transition. So with these two clips, I can run them through a variety of processes and uh, be able to reuse that effect using history. All right, so let's just go to uh, some of the flame effects here. And what I'm gonna do is just use flame effects, flame effects two. I'm gonna choose Matchbox. And when I choose Matchbox, uh, there's several different options uh, you can choose in here. Uh, but I'm just gonna choose the input switcher. And what the input switcher basically does is allows me to choose some sources. So I'll choose the first one first and then the second one. And what it basically is, is just a, a standard, uh, almost uh, video switcher. So I can actually keyframe when it's going to cut from one source to another or do a dissolve. So at the end of the 30 frames here, I'm going to say, go to transition two. I'm going to say, go to the second cut. Go back to the first one, set the keyframe back to be the first cut. And I'm going to hit blend input at this point, which over the course of time, We'll just basically just do a dissolve. All right, so let's process that out. All right, that clip is now on our desktop, and it's basically a dissolve. All right, so let's run it through something else, something a little bit more interesting. Let's run it through the deform node. So now that I have my clips sort of blended together, I can actually hide that transition using uh, some of the deform nodes. So I'll just choose that clip, go back to my desktop. And you can see I've got this really nice uh, elaborate crumple effect. Uh, there's several other things you can choose. I could choose twirl, wave. I mean, there's, there's lots of deform effects uh, using this module. So at the beginning of it, we obviously need to have a clean frame to start with. And let's say about halfway through, we'll ramp up the amplitude for this. And then at the end frame, we need to be clean again. So if you look at this now, you've got this little transition that sort of crumples on and crumples off. Now it's kind of just does a sort of an on and then kind of reverses. So that's not really interesting. So let's just adjust the time offset real quick. 
keyframe a little change in value there, which will add uh, a little bit more fluidity to this effect. There we go. So that works out real well. Let's process that out. All right, and now that clip is on my desktop. All right, so I can go back to my edit, and all I have to do is copy this clip down, and I can basically copy it right over the, my custom transition in my timeline. It'll drop it in. I can just actually delete that, and you can see now that I have a new clip in between here, which is just the, the second 30 frames for my transition. All right, so I've got a nice elaborate transition. And I can actually use this now in other places in my edit because you can see here on the timeline it has a little H, that's for history. So if I am positioned over the clip, I can hit Control F5 and it will actually show me the history for this clip. It'll give me the uh, sources that went into it. First we did the little matchbox dissolve and then later on we did deform and that became our last output clip. I continue to add more effects on this clip like glows and things like that. Uh, but for now, we'll just leave it simple. So let's use this transition again. I've got another edit here. Basically, I've got my police cars going into my tight shot of my anchors. All right. So what we'll do is we'll simply take this cut here. We'll add a custom transition again. I'll make it the same length. and I will match out these sources again. There we go. So here is my from and to sources. Now with that, I can actually copy this effect, add a layer, I can copy this effect down. And with history now, I can hit Control F5 view the history, and all I have to do is replace these source clips. So if I double tap on, a, on the first source, get a cursor that allows me to choose the source, so I will choose the police cars, and then I can go into the second clip and choose the outgoing clip. Now you can see that the source clips changed and these became unrendered. So all I have to do now is basically just hit render. It will process each of these effects as it goes, And then when it's done, I can go back to my timeline. This is my finished effect. So if I want to clean up my timeline a little bit, I can just drop that back down to leave the little custom. And now I've got that same transition again in a new edit or a different part of my edit. So the only uh, limitation here is that with custom edits and using history, they all have to be the same length. So if you've built something that you really like, you may want to build it a couple of times and maybe different varying transition lengths, you know, like one second, two second, 15 frames, whatever it might be. Because whatever that transition effect will be, you're going to have to make it the same length again in another edit. There's no way to really actually make it shorter uh, and make it work. So that's just one of the, the limitations in it. So that's a little bit about how to use history uh, on Smoke and custom transitions, and which also answers the Avid DS question uh, that I was given. So uh, if anybody else has no questions, just drop me a message on the blog, and I'll be happy to get back to you. See ya.